The Atlanta Falcons just pulled off a huge win, beating the Tampa Bay Buccaneers 36-30. That's two big division wins in a row for the Falcons, and it's clear they're starting to find their groove in the NFC South. The offense, led by new coordinator Zach Robinson, is finally moving in the right direction, even though the running game was a bit off in this one. This was a close, hard-fought game from start to finish, and while the Falcons definitely had some struggles, they came through when it mattered. It wasn't the cleanest performance, but they found a way to get it done. The Falcons have been battling through these tough division games, and they're showing they can handle the pressure. With momentum on their side, they're starting to look like a team that can make some real noise in the division. But before we get into that, hit that like and subscribe button for more NFL content. Let's aim for 350 likes on this video. Kirk Cousins showed exactly why the Falcons invested in him. He put on an impressive display, throwing for over 500 yards with four touchdowns, proving he can still deliver in high-pressure situations. Sure, he threw one interception, but it came on a 4th and 15 play where he had no choice but to push the ball downfield. Overall, Cousins played a huge role in securing this win and his ability to step up when the run game wasn't working shows just how vital he is to this offense. It wasn't all smooth sailing, though. Cousins got sacked four times, and you could see he's still limited by his lack of mobility, especially coming off an Achilles injury. He's never been the most athletic quarterback, but his accuracy and leadership were on full display. When it counted, he led the Falcons on a crucial game-winning drive, just like he did earlier this season against the Eagles. Kirk Cousins didn't do it alone. His wide receivers came up big when the team needed them most. Leading the charge was Drake London, who put up 12 catches for 154 yards and a touchdown. He was easily the go-to target all game, making critical plays until he had to leave in overtime due to injury. His performance was a reminder of just how crucial he is to this offense, and it's great news that he seems to be fine after the game. Then there's Darnell Mooney, who added 105 yards and two touchdowns on nine catches. He did have a crucial drop late in the game, but you can't overlook how consistent he's been this season. One bad play doesn't define the kind of impact he had throughout the game. Kyle Pitts also bounced back in a big way. After being quite last game, he pulled in seven catches for 88 yards. It's clear the Falcons need him involved if they want this offense to keep clicking, and he showed he's still a key piece of the puzzle. Finally, Kaderil Hodge delivered when it mattered most, snagging the game-winning touchdown and finishing with 67 receiving yards. It wasn't just one guy doing the work. These receivers gave Cousins the support he needed, especially when the run game couldn't get going. The Falcons' run game just didn't get off the ground in this one. Tyler Algier and Bijan Robinson both struggled to find any real momentum, and it was clear from early on that the ground attack wasn't going to be a factor. This put a lot more pressure on Kirk Cousins to carry the offense, which isn't ideal for a team that prides itself on having strong running backs. Coach Zach Robinson tried to adjust by calling more screen passes, but it didn't quite do the trick. While it made sense given the situation, relying on screens can only take you so far, especially when you have talented backs like Algier and Robinson. They need to be more involved in the offense moving forward, and the Falcons will have to figure out how to get the running game back on track. One big factor in the struggles was the offensive line. With Caleb McGarry out, the line hasn't been the same and it showed in both the run and pass protection. The Falcons need to get healthier up front if they want to see more production from their running backs. Injuries are really starting to take a toll on the Falcons, and it's showing on both sides of the ball. The absence of Caleb McGarry, their starting right tackle, has been a major issue. Without him, the offensive line has struggled, which not only hurts the run game but also puts more pressure on Kirk Cousins, who doesn't have the mobility to escape the pocket easily. McGarry's return will be critical to getting this offense back to full strength. On top of that, Cousins himself is still dealing with the effects of his Achilles injury. While he's playing well, he's clearly not 100%, and his lack of mobility is more noticeable now than before. This limits what the Falcons can do in terms of moving the pocket or extending plays. Drake London's injury scare in overtime was another moment of concern, though thankfully it looks like he'll be okay. But with key players already missing, every injury adds more pressure on the remaining healthy starters to step up. The Falcons' defense has been a bit of a mixed bag this season. On one hand, their secondary has been solid, anchored by strong performances from guys like A.J. Terrell and Mike Hughes. Terrell continues to play at a high level, and Hughes had a strong showing against Tampa Bay, even though they did give up a few big plays to Mike Evans. But the real problem for this defense is the pass rush, or rather the lack of it. 
Outside of Matthew Judon, who has been their most reliable pass rusher, the Falcons haven't been able to generate enough pressure on opposing quarterbacks. This is a big reason why teams are putting up big passing numbers against them. Without consistent pressure up front, even the best secondary will struggle. And that's exactly what's happening here. Raheem Morris, the defensive coordinator, will likely need to consider making some adjustments soon, maybe even looking at trades to bring in more help. The team can't rely on blitzing every down because that leaves them exposed in other areas, as we saw when Baker Mayfield picked them apart with three passing touchdowns. While they did make some key adjustments in the second half to slow down the Buccaneers' run game, it's clear that the Falcons' defense will need to step up if they want to keep winning these tight games. With the offense doing its part, the defense has to find a way to get more pressure up front and create some turnovers. The Falcons have been in their fair share of nail biters this season, and it's clear they know how to hang tough in close games. One of the most notable was their eight point loss to the Pittsburgh Steelers, a game where they didn't even allow an offensive touchdown. The defense held strong, but the offense couldn't do quite enough to get over the hump. They also had a tight game against the Philadelphia Eagles, where Kirk Cousins led a late drive. The Eagles game was another example of how close the Falcons have been to turning these competitive games into wins. And let's not forget their matchup with the Kansas City Chiefs, a game that came down to a questionable defensive pass interference call that wasn't flagged. They lost that one by just five points in what could have easily gone the other way. Despite these losses, the Falcons have shown they can compete with some of the best teams in the league. The Falcons are in a good spot right now, and this win over the Buccaneers gives them a boost of confidence heading into the rest of the season. With back-to-back -back division wins under their belt, they're starting to build some real momentum. If Kirk Cousins can stay consistent and the run game gets back on track, this team could become one of the tougher squads to beat in the NFC South. The key moving forward will be getting healthier, especially on the offensive line. If they can get Caleb McGarry back and improve their pass protection, it will take a lot of pressure off Cousins. The defense also needs to step up, particularly in generating pressure on opposing quarterbacks. They've shown they can make adjustments, but the pass rush will need to improve if they want to keep winning close games. With the talent they have on both sides of the ball, the Falcons control their own destiny in this division. But the big question is, can they maintain this level of play throughout the season? Will Kirk Cousins continue to lead the offense with the same efficiency? Can the defense find a way to apply more pressure and close out games? What do you guys think? Is this Falcons team the real deal or do they still have some work to do before they can be considered true contenders and looking at the rest of the division? Do you believe the Falcons have what it takes to stay on top? Drop your thoughts in the comments and don't forget to like and subscribe if you're enjoying the content. It's going to be an exciting season and I can't wait to see how it all plays out. Thanks for watching.